Hey guys, um, we're gonna do a quick video on uh, um, how to fix a, a temperature sensor on a hard drive on an iMac. I have a, a mid-2010 iMac 27 inch. Uh, the hard drive died and, and apparently I found out that the, the Apple hard drives or iMac hard drives have some sensor inside the hard drive which is monitored by the motherboard. So I replaced the hard drive hoping that, that you know I can just keep that connector loose but it turns out that you might have experienced the fans will just go crazy in a few minutes right it will keep on at full speed and it was getting very annoying. Um, so first thing I did I, I order uh, the by the way I was replacing a, a Samsung hard drive which was originally dead uh, with a Seagate and it, right off the bat there was a difference between the connector this is a connector from the original Samsung um, as you can see it's a f kind of a square connector with a two pin um, the Seagate hard drive on the other hand had a kind of a flat four pin connector and apparently you you need two connector like this kind of wire it's a part number is right there um, and this was the old part number well I'm showing you these cables, but the, the problem was after I replaced the cable with the right one, the fans, fans still kept going. And so at that point, I, I said, you know what, forget it. I'm not going to worry about this. I'm just going to hack this thing. So by, by what I mean is what we're going to do is uh, bypass the, the hard drive temperature sensor altogether. Um, I measure a couple uh, temperature sensors around you know on a on a DVD drive and a, a various other places and it turns out the the temperature value or sorry the the, the te normal temperature uh, thermistor or whatever they're using to sense the temperature reading is about a 1k um, ohm so what I, what I basically did is I bypassed the sensor altogether and I sw soldered um, a one kilo ohm uh, resistor instead. So the motherboard will basically think that the hard drive is operating at normal temperature all the time and will never have the fan issue. Now, I would warn you, this could actually, um, you know, damage your hard drive over a long time because we're not actually monitoring the temperature um, and it could die um, without warning and you might lose all your data. So if you go and implement this hack, make sure you back up your data regularly on an external hard drive. I always do, so I'm not worried about that. Um, and besides, there's a plenty of airflow um, that's going through the hard drive area. I'll show you when we open this thing. Uh, so I don't think you should have a problem with overheating the hard drive. So with that, I'm going to start opening up this iMac and I'll show you what, what we need to do. Thanks video is about how to open an iMac. Uh, this is a 27 inch mid 2010 model. Uh, uh, believe it or not this whole thing is put to hold together by a bunch of magnets. So if you look at this corner I can simply pry with my my fingernails and I can pop the screen right off basically and there are there are four latches or not latches but kind of notches holding the screen in place and just simply lift it out you know put it on the side and <clears throat> for the LCD there are one two three four and one two three four four Torx TH screws on on both sides um, and you can just simply take them off and I'll show you how to pry this LCD off after we're done taking the screws off. After you take off all the eight screws on both sides, the LCD has a, a little uh, frame here. You can just again use your fingernail and kind of pry it out <clears throat> slowly. Don't pull it off. Uh, there are a bunch of cables inside. So first one you're gonna see is right there. That's um, um, some sort of control 
connection for the LCD there are four wires there's a little notch here as you can see uh, this you can use your fingernail and pry it straight out um, oh by the way before you open this thing there is high voltages going to LCD through this connector so make sure you disconnect the power cable I got shocked so I found out the hard way um, so you just again use your fingernail to pry this little tab on top and push it down straight and that should pop the power um, connector out uh, and then there is a, a temperature connector again uh, for the LCD <clears throat> it's a two wire this one okay you can see the wire going on to the LCD again same two notch use your fingernail to pry it straight out up again the last one is this con um, this display um, <clears throat> the actual signal connection so this is gonna be what is think of like your HDMI so there is a black tab here there's another it used to be on this side I broke it um, so just kind of basically push it with your finger inside this little me metal thing you see is actually a, a a lock so you push it in and that's how it unlocks the the connector and pull it straight out so I'll show you when it's off so you see that little connector here you basically push the in and that will unlock the connector right and it's spring loaded so when you put it back in just push it straight down on these black tabs and it will lock right in okay so after all your four connectors are uh, are disconnected you simply lift the LCD off the base again that there are the places it kind of rests on um, <clears throat> this little sponge places at the back at the bottom <clears throat> so now <clears throat> now we're at the fun part um, <clears throat> so that's a hard drive and this supposed to be a temperature uh, sensor but it's not I found it out for Seagate they somehow probably didn't enable in the firmware or whatever have you and as you can see there is a this air gap this this blower is actually coming from either one of these two fans so there's gonna be always airflow going through the hard drive area so I'm not worried about overheating it so what, what we did is this used to be a connector and you can read it there HDD temp I disconnected the original cable which was this guy uh, <clears throat> and I simply use the terminals below the connectors to solder a couple of tin wires and I added a one kilo ohm resistor to kind of fool it in thinking that the temperature of the hard drive is is completely normal and I use a little heat shrink wrap here so I don't sort anything up and that's that's it folks um, um, we're just gonna put it back together and that should uh, <clears throat> help you fix your temperature sensor um, fan issue if you will um, so thanks for watching and um, be sure to subscribe I'm gonna put this thing together again bye